yourself from false god if you say okay i am making allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my purpose of life and worshiping and i am also worshiping other that at least like you are worshiping devil and actually god at the same time so that won't work connecting to angels angels are beings of light there are beings of darkness like devil and all evil these jinns so in islam we are commanded to connect to the good forces and angels are the good forces and how you connect to them you believe in them you do what they like they like cleanliness they like like piety they like truthfulness so once you do these good deeds you are connecting to angels if you start doing bad and evil deeds you are harming people you are taking drugs and you are doing all these abominable things is as though you are connecting with devils and shayateen actually so you disconnect with them and connect to angels and there is the books uh, which god almighty sent as a message what is in that books philosophy of life how do you live your life what is this life so you only benefit once you reject the opposing ideas because in those you have a philosophy of life someone said how can i fix this life one of the wise people he said fix your death and here after and life will be fixed automatically because once you want to fix your act this means that in this life i won't lie i won't, if i want to fix akhira and grave and my death i don't want to be harming people i want to be sincere i should be sincere if i want to fix akhira i would be doing business in in an honest manner if i want to fix my akhira i want to fulfill the rights of my spouse my neighbor my countryman the creation even the animal you understand once you truly fix your akhira your this life automatically becomes fixed so how to fix your this so believing in akhira is and then preparing and fixing your akhira fixing your the life of barzakh and the grave automatically your this life is fixed it's like a mirror you see if you have a face in front of the mirror the mirror is the the image so if you clean your face and the face in the mirror will automatically be cleansed so this dunya is whatever you do is a reflection what you are going to get in akhirah so if actually you fix your akhirah and you work your way backward reverse engineering that oh in the hereafter god allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask me how i have been with people so i should fix my relationship he will ask how i have been using my eyes i should now start using my eyes very well he will ask how time how i have used time in this dunya wasting here and there so if i fix that then actually my this life will be fixed so you see how it benefits you believing and preparing for akhira automatically this life actually become fixed those people who forget akhira then even their this life is mess because they have no rule there are no rules in the game for the for them so there is no peace for them they can do whatever but they they will never so believing in akhira while not making this life your uh, purpose this is also in beliefs connecting with the real role models who are the real role models 
One of the sign is the Quran has mentioned who is your real moral mother. Ittabi'u man la yas'alukum ajra wa hum muhtadun. The Quran uses two qualities for real role. You are from, yeah, this is this politician is my leader and, and this is my role model. Oh, this uh, football star is my role model. Or oh, this actor is my role model. What, but what is the criteria? Criteria is the Quran says, Malla yas alukum ajra. He is or she, he is not asking anything from you. No money, no praise, no status, no likes, nothing. But you find in this role in dunya, everyone wants something from you. Politicians want to vote from you. Someone wants note from you. Some others want praise from you. They all want something, actually. They want you to buy. So they, they have invested interest, which they, you, they want you to use. They want to use you as a stepping stone to go to the height of fame and name and then, then actually things. But the Quran says the real role model, you, are, you should be following the person who doesn't want anything from you for himself. And secondly, he should be a model of success himself in all spheres of life. If he has, he is a failure in this life or in many spheres or many uh, parts of life, then how can he be a model for you? Someone might be a very good politician, but they might be a bad neighbor. They might be a very rich person, but they might be a very bad human being. If you ask this, so that's why the Prophet والسلام, mentioned that خيركم, the best amongst you, who is the best, who is best in conduct with his, their family, with their close people. And he said, the best amongst human beings, خيرun nas, mayan fam nas. The one who benefits, who is profitable for others. So when do you give profit? What is profit? If I take five pounds from you and give you back five pounds, I have not given you profit. Profit will only be understood when I have taken five pounds, I am giving you six pounds. Or if I have not given any, I have not taken anything, I am giving you a pound, so this is profit for you. So the Prophet Islam is indicating one of the, uh, in, in this hadith, that you should be giving people, Allah likes that person who gives people, who, to other people, more than what they deserve. So if someone is not phoning you, you to phone him, is, is a prophet. You are doing something extra. If someone is not nice or decent with you, is not behaving well, but you behave well, this is something you are giving which he is not giving. If someone does not fulfill your need when you needed them, but when they are in need, you feel now you have done something which they have not. This is prophet. So you see, it's uh, the Prophet Islam, Muhammad mentioned that who is the best amongst human beings. is not the one for tit for tat and okay, I'll be this or he's wronging people or harming people or actually uh, people fear him, they are scared, they are, you are manipulating their uh, minds and bodies with force. They are not the best people, they are the worst ones. Best ones are the, those who benefit them. They are giving them more than what others deserve. Like the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us practically that whenever he used to borrow money from someone, let's say he borrowed 1,000 pounds, he will return 1,200. 
Not that that person is demanding, because then it becomes interest. But just out of favor, because let's say if you you were in a dire need because your house was being confiscated or your car was being confiscated or your meter was being electricity, you were to lose electricity, and you needed that money. You were in dire, very badly in need. Someone gives you one thousand pound. Okay, then a big problem, affliction has has been watered away. So now, after one month, two month, you have given him thousand back. You have given him the money back, but the what he relieved from you, the burden he lightened from you. What's the reward for that? Where is anything you paid for that? Anything you given for that? You were just giving one thousand back. He gave you that. But the problem you were, the agony, the pain you were in. So for that, he should also be given something, thankfulness and a and a gift for them. So imagine the. I'm just giving you example because we deal with money and we are very concerned. Just showing you. the prophet muhammad's way of giving back the money he borrowed that he always gave more than what he borrowed and he was happy with anyone who gave him less what he actually took for example some one borrowed 1000 and they came and say okay this is only 900 he was or happy that's it Some have worked for him. He gave them more. 